When I grow up, I want to be a Karen soldier. I hate the Burmese soldiers because they shot people. One girl told me that she was not interested in education. She told me that she wanted to be a bird and fly far away freely. There's been an increase in demand for mental health and psychosocial support in Myanmar since the military coup of February 2021. Kayin State has borne the brunt of military clashes in that period and its displaced children are among the most vulnerable. And yet, they are receiving little to no help to deal with this trauma. Hello and welcome to Doathan, a weekly podcast that brings you human rights stories from Myanmar. It's brought to you by Foundation Irondel. This episode is produced by journalists from KIC and Frontier Myanmar. Some names have been changed to protect contributors. Two-year-old Aung Thu Myo is afraid of loud noises. He spent half of his short life living in a conflict zone, exposed to the sounds of gunshots and airplanes. His family fled their home a year ago due to conflict, and they're now living in a displacement camp near Lake Ekor in Miawadi Township. His mother describes his behavior. This child runs back to the house when he hears sound. Even if he hears a car door closing, he thinks it is a gunshot and runs back home, even if he doesn't want to eat. If you tell him that he is going to hear gunshots, he gets scared and eats rice. Aung Thu Myo's older sister was almost killed when they fled their home. A bullet whistled past her head and she fainted in fear. The family is sheltering in the IDP camp for now, but conflict is never far away, and they have bags packed, ready to escape at any time. Latest figures from ISP Myanmar suggest there were at least 8,590 clashes across Myanmar between 1st of February 2021 and 18th of March 2023. 52% of those were in Kayin state. That's more than half of the national total just in one state. There were also more than 105 airstrikes conducted by the Myanmar military in Kayin State in 2022, according to the Karen National Liberation Army. Nearly 500,000 people have been displaced by the fighting in Kayin State, and 30% of them are children, according to figures compiled by the Karen Women's Organization, KWO. Children living in or near the conflict areas in Kayin State are being traumatized by their experiences and it's beginning to impact on their emotional development. In front of a shelter in the same camp, 11-year-old Salwin U spoke to Doathan. His cartoon pattern trousers were childlike, but his face was full of resentment, born of bitter experience. He fled from his home with his family in December 2021, when fighting broke out in Lake Ekor. Initially, they took shelter in a monastery, but they were forced to flee from there as well. Burmese soldiers opened fire on the displaced people while I was taking shelter at Pa Lu Monastery. That forced many IDPs to flee to safe locations. I heard that two displaced people were injured when Burmese soldiers opened fire. I was afraid that I would get hurt when I ran in the middle of the crowd. When I ran away, my mother was holding my hand, but I slipped and was trampled by people. Their home is only 20 miles away from the IDP camp, but it's impossible for them to return to their village because of the risks from unexploded ordnance and landmines. Saluin U is a grade 3 student and attends classes in the IDP camp but he has already decided on his future career. When I grow up, I want to be a Karen soldier. I hate the Burmese soldiers because they shot people. Soldiers should fight each other. Many innocent civilians are shot dead by Burmese soldiers. Doathan spoke to other youngsters in the camp 
and this was a fairly common response from the boys. While many teenage girls did not know what to do, or they'd given up on their previous dream. These are all children who have had to flee from their homes in terror, who are living in shelters in a conflict zone. And now they have limited, disrupted education opportunities. A temporary school has been built inside the displacement camp for children of all ages, but there are not enough high school teachers. Nan Gay is one of the teachers in the camp. She says there's an increasing rate of dropouts from school. IDB children are no longer interested in school, especially teenage boys who want to fight back against the Myanmar military. One girl told me that she was not interested in education. She told me that she wanted to be a bird and fly far away freely. Children between the ages of 12 and 18 are very vulnerable emotionally. So, at a vulnerable age, these children are having to deal with stressful and horrific circumstances. There are no mental health programs for IDP children in these camps. Parents don't know how to treat their children's trauma and are often distressed or depressed themselves. A World Health Organization report from 2019 suggested that the prevalence of mental health disorders globally is one in five among people in conflict areas, compared to one in 14 for the rest of the world. There are some online and phone counselling services, but very few IDPs can afford internet fees, and even phone reception is very poor in these areas. Dorothan spoke to a counsellor from Metau Clinic in Mesot about the situation for traumatised children. Right now, they don't have both mental and physical security because they have to flee from the conflict. They need help both mentally and physically. If we don't give counselling to them, they can grow suspicion from their resentment and become extremists. Norkanyor Poor, General Secretary of the Karen Women's Organization, KWO, says the problem of traumatised children and disrupted education goes beyond the IDP camp. There are many areas in Kayin State which are near conflict zones or suddenly find themselves under attack. Schools open when they can, but have to close again when fighting breaks out. She says KWO and the Karen Education and Culture Department are doing what they can. Their teachers organise games and sports and encourage children to talk to them about their emotions. But it may not be enough. When the children should be having fun and studying, they have to flee in the middle of the battle and the military hunter has carried out airstrikes. So the children are traumatized. If a child is in a constant state of fear, it will take a lot of time to heal him. If children are always afraid, they will develop resentment. This situation is also reflected in other conflict areas of Myanmar. Latest UN figures suggest that 1.4 million people have been displaced across Myanmar since the coup. All children have the right to a full and normal education, according to the UN Declaration of Human Rights. The UN Security Council passed a special resolution in 2021 calling on all parties to safeguard, protect, respect and promote the right to education including in armed conflict. Children's health and safety should also be protected under the Geneva Conventions and the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And yet there is very little or no help available for traumatised children like Salu and U. Not only will that negatively affect their health and life choices, but it could have dire consequences for their communities, states and countries. Nor can your poor again. <laughs> They are growing older without learning. Because of that, our public education will be affected again. Workplaces in the next region will be affected. The growth of distinguishing between right and wrong will be affected. There will be a decline in education too. It will become a big challenge for the growth of the family, nation, region, township, and state. We hope you enjoy this edition of Doathan. You can listen to our podcast via the Dothan Facebook page. It can also be found on SoundCloud, YouTube and iTunes. You can also listen every Saturday night from 9 to 10 p.m. and Sunday morning 
from 6 to 7 a.m. on Voice of America Radio. The project to support human rights reporting is delivered by Foundation Hirondelle and is made with the support of our donors. Thanks for staying with us while broadcasting. <laughs>